Next, we're going to evaluate for rotator cuff problems. There's two problems that you want to specifically look for. One would be rotator cuff tendonitis, and the other would be a ro rotator cuff tear. To look for rotator cuff tendonitis, first have the patient uh, bring their arm up over their head. And if they have pain, when they get in the range of motion between 120 degrees and 70 degrees, that's the so-called painful arc. And that would indicate impingement of the subacromial tissues on the undersurface of the acromion. Uh, you also want to have the patient bring their arm into internal rotation to see if they can do that comfortably, and then external rotation. You also want to look for symmetry to make sure that uh, the arms can externally rotate to the same degree. Uh, again, if there's inflammation in the, the, the rotator cuff area, that may be limited. There are a number of other tests that can be done. The nearest test, you bring the arm up and then rotate it. And with Hawkins test, bring the arm into this position and rotate. Essentially, both of these maneuvers are just recreating the internal and external rotation that we demonstrated previously. This patient is now going to demonstrate what it may look like if there's a decrease in range of motion one side to the other as you do the maneuver. In checking for a rotator cuff tear, you want to bring the arm up so that you're 90 degrees uh, abducted and 30 degrees forward flexed with the thumb down. This is the position where you're stressing the supraspinatus muscle uh, the most. And you want to push down. And if you can't overcome uh, the force of their resistance, uh, then it's unlikely they have a rotator cuff tear. The patient's now going to demonstrate what it might look like if somebody had a, a partial rotator cuff tear. As I press down, the side that's weaker would drop down the so-called drop test because there's no strength in the torn muscle to resist the motion.